Okay, um, uh, welcome to uh, Software Development One. Uh, very nicely named. What we're going to be doing by the end of this two weeks, it's just it's going to last two weeks, um, is again thinking about our three uh, categories of objectives. We want to continue with pair programming, getting better at thinking about how you pair program, um, and um, uh, what kinds of people are you pair programming with, what styles are you pair programming. Um, so that's something that we're going to be uh, thinking about over the next two weeks. Um, uh, the uh, delivery goal is about test driving front-end applications using JavaScript. And we're going to be using browser JavaScript, JavaScript in the browser rather than uh, Node.js. And I'll talk a little bit about that. As a result, we'll need to think about asynchronous behavior and how that works. Um, we'll also be uh, looking at how to consume data, the idea of getting data from an external third party and using it in our applications. And we call that the idea of consuming an API. Um, and we'll get better at working in JavaScript. Um, uh, uh, in terms of our growth goal, uh, we're going to be identifying uh, tools to get visibility for front-end web applications. So thinking about expanding our tools for getting visibility um, and different parts of our technical stack. So we'll be working on the front end in the browser, um, uh, which is different to uh, uh, the JavaScript that's been running on uh, our machines. Uh, we're going to apply a learning cycle in a new domain. So we have an opportunity now to think about how we learn and apply it you know, better. So think about where you were two, three weeks ago, think learning, learning JavaScript. Um, uh, we're going to try uh, uh, the same thing, but now uh, in a new domain. Uh, so think about the way that you're approaching the learning, uh, be active and be intentional. So uh, we have two weeks uh, to be able to achieve these goals. Um, uh, our main two projects uh, are the thermostat project that we're going to kick off uh, this afternoon um, and a to-do list project called yet another to-do list. Um, uh, that'll be next week. Uh, for next week's project, we'll actually introduce uh, a front-end framework in JavaScript called React. And so we'll look at how React works starting from next week. The module challenge uh, is the, a new summary challenge where we uh, create a front-end application that, that gets data from uh, a, a newspaper uh, API, brings it back to your application, and then shows it on the screen. Uh, it summarizes it, summarizes the news articles as well. Uh, we'll be doing that next week. So this weekend uh, is uh, a weekend off. Uh, we don't have a challenge this weekend, all right? Um, so fun times for everyone. It's a chance for you to catch up on all the work this week. Um, and, uh, and maybe also, if you want to, get a head start on the challenge that's due at the end of this module. So one challenge, this module, all right? New summary challenge. There's a lot to do the next two weeks. Clearly, you've already spent two weeks here with us. You know how much there is to do. So um, uh, there'll be a couple of sessions uh, that we have in the morning. I know on Friday we decided uh, to sort of switch up some of the mornings and the afternoons. Uh, and so I'm going to try and make sure that happens. I might already uh, have added it. Yes. Um, it's not complete yet, your, uh, your schedule, but the, for tomorrow morning, it definitely is. All right. I might add a couple more things in this calendar. Um, so, uh, what do I want to say? Oh yeah. Okay. So, uh, we'll be working with, um, uh, with this project here, thermostat. What this project is, is you might, your, your implementation will look different to this. This is an example of something where you're going to create, a, 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 an application, uh, that is a thermostat. Um, uh, that you, very simple, uh, where you click on a, a plus button or a negative button, up or down, whatever you want to do, and you change the temperature, right? So they're represented by this number here. Um, and it has a limit, uh, a minimum limit, and a maximum limit, depending on whether you toggle the, the power saving mode, all right? The idea behind this project is to get you familiar with how JavaScript can manipulate uh, uh, the HTML on your screen. I'll talk about this in a second. This is a visual representation of what it is. You can design and style however you want, but the, the requirements are here. Um, uh, you have some requirements. Starts 20 degrees, you can increase the temperature with up and down. It's got a minimum, 
some different defaults um, and uh, some colors that you'll have to implement. So this is uh, the specification that you have to make sure you uh, satisfy. Um, in terms of the, the steps of the projects, we're gonna start off with uh, the, the business logic. So like how it actually works. So you're gonna go through a process where you think about uh, creating domain model of the thermostat, what functions is it gonna need? How is it going to work? Then you'll create your interface, actually how a user is gonna interact with it. And then how do you uh, 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 actually change the HTML? So how are we gonna interact with it? How do we actually, when you click on a button, how do you then change uh, um, uh, your thermostat. There'll be a little section on adding more data from an API and some stuff about styling. So these are the five steps that we'll have for this uh, for this week. Um, when you get to the end of it, if you get to the end of it, um, uh, you, uh, let me know and I'll give you more requirements. Um, if you think about, uh, you might you might want to spend the whole week on these steps. There's lots you can dive into, um, and every step. Uh, you can spend a lot of time and get a lot of learning from. So this is going to be the project for this for the for this afternoon for the rest of this week when you pair up uh, with your pair partners. Um, so uh, when when I when you all split up into your pairs, the first thing you'll do is uh, go onto the thermostat business logic and start from there. Now, let's uh, talk a little bit about the difference between Node.js and JavaScript in, that runs in the browser. Um, so, uh, hold on. All right, we also have a new Miro board. And not just the little whiteboard, but the whole new link, all right? Sometimes it gets, uh, uh, the loading time gets slow because we I've, I keep all of the, the prior artifacts. Um, in your um, the Discord channel, you'll see that, uh, and the pinned items, I've actually added uh, another link here. So just double check in the, in the, in the pinned items. So you, if you want to join me on the mirror board, you click on the right link. All right, you can always go back and have a look at the previous ones. So this is our new link. So um, I said something about the difference between, uh, oh, that's quite, Okay, so uh, I want everyone to have a picture in their heads about the difference between the JavaScript running uh, 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 when you run it from your terminal, uh, like this, this JavaScript, uh, compared to JavaScript in the browser. They are entirely separate, all right? There is no crossover here. The only similarity is in the syntax, okay? What does that mean? Well, in order for a programming language um, uh, to work, uh, there needs to be a bunch of different um, uh, uh, files and folders to read the text of the language that you're using to, to write, uh, create essentially a syntax tree of how the scope of the variables and how the functions work, um, uh, and then actually run your program. Um, and uh, we call this uh, uh, essentially a runtime environment. So the question to ask yourself is where is the runtime environment? Uh, when you're running Node.js, you have to install it, all right? So when you go through an installation process, you have to install Node.js. So right at the very beginning, you remember, you went to the website, or however you wanted to, to install it, and you uh, you brought a bunch of files and folders back down to your um, uh, to your laptop, to your machine, or wherever you're installing it, and that's where uh, your runtime environment is. And so everything that is node node related is executed inside of uh, uh, your runtime environment. So any node applications, node app.js, for example. 
gets run within this environment. Now, Node.js itself may communicate with the operating system. Uh, so in, in things like the file system um, and, and any other resources uh, that your computer has available. Uh, there's a communication between your programming language or any kind of programming language that exists on your machine and the operating system. Um, I'm going to move the screen so we can speak a little bit. Now, when we run JavaScript in the browser, um, uh, this is slightly different, but we still need a runtime environment. Now, the great thing about uh, JavaScript in the browser is that you don't need to install it. Once you uh, have your browser, your browser has its own runtime environment. And so when you can execute JavaScript in the browser, because every browser is a fantastic piece of technology that does lots of things, many things, but it has its own JavaScript runtime environment. Um, uh, so you don't need to install the language. All you need to do is install the browser and it comes with it. And that's fantastic because it means everyone who has access to a browser can execute JavaScript. All right, you don't need to go through a separate installation process to install the language. So how can you access it? Well, all you need to do, wherever you are at, in your, in your, in your whichever browser you're using, um, is um, uh, open up uh, your, uh, uh, so if you're on Chrome, open up the Chrome tools, Chrome Dev tools. If you're uh, in uh, Safari, open up the inspector, whatever, you, what, whatever it is, we can have a look at it together. So let's imagine everyone's on Chrome. Uh, let's go back to Chrome. In a new tab, you can uh, uh, right-click wherever you are and go inspect. And this brings up this like crazy thing on the right. But we have a look at the console here, and this is essentially the same thing as this. It's a REPL, right? It reads, evaluates, prints, loops back to uh, uh, wait for more input. So same same way that I can uh, evaluate JavaScript in, in, a, in my node REPL in my machine, in the browser, it has its own runtime environment, so I can do the same thing. Yay, I can evaluate JavaScript. So a browser comes with its own runtime environment for JavaScript, and, uh, and therefore everyone has access to, to JavaScript in the browser. So this makes it a great, great language to use to, to develop applications. Because it, every browser comes with it, uh, we can write in, in JavaScript, and it's why it's incredibly common. Almost like 99.9% .9 of applications um, uh, use JavaScript, their web applications use JavaScript, some, some version. Um, uh, now, uh, every, uh, every browser has to support JavaScript. Uh, how, uh, so what that means is um, sometimes there are small differences um, in the way that each browser supports it. Um, but by and large, uh, JavaScript uh, is available to any browser that's installed on the machine, which is great news for us. So we've already been learning JavaScript, uh, uh, the Node.js version of it, but we can also use the same syntax, but do it in the browser. We have to remember a couple of things, though. Um, uh, the way that we're using process uh, 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 back in the Node environment uh, to give us access to things like uh, uh, process.env to get all our environment, uh, our environment variables um, uh, and any other uh, things that we wanted to interact with in terms of the node uh, object itself, we don't have access to in the browser quite reasonably because they are entirely separate into separate runtime environments. All right, the browser does not interact with the operating system easily. The way that we write JavaScript here, all right? So we don't have access to the file system. There's a few things that uh, we can't do very easily. But in the same way that um, uh, the browser doesn't have access to, to the, to the uh, process object, um, the browser has its own benefits. So we can access everything uh, uh, in the window. So if we have a look at, um, let's, let's open up a very simple, Am I going to exit out of this? Let's open up an HTML page. Look at this fantastic, fantastic website. It's the biggest we can see it. 
This is like back in the early 2000s style of website. Hello folks, this is um, um, some text on the page, all right? Uh, what I just did is I have an HTML file and all I did was ask my browser to open up an HTML file. HTML stands for, um, uh, not that we really need to know it, um, uh, but HTML, if we think about the three different, uh, three main parts of a, uh, of, a, of a web application, we have HTML, oh, we make that over here, which essentially is the content, the what, what it is that you see. HTML stands for hypertext markup language. It's a markup language. Um, uh, we have HTML just to, to show what the, the things are. Um, we have uh, a way to uh, uh, display how it looks. So this is what we call style. Um, and then we have uh, a JavaScript, which is essentially how it behaves. Um, so web applications are usually uh, some, some form of the three of these different technologies. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time, if any, together as a group, like trying to learn HTML and CSS. All right? These are quite uh, rule-based lang uh, uh, languages. HTML is not really a language, it's a markup language, so it just takes content and adds metadata around it. Let's have a look at this example. Um, I take in some, some hello folks, this is like the, the content, and I add data around it so the browser knows how to display it. So HTML is all about adding metadata around content and specifying the type of content. So I'm saying this is a paragraph element, maybe it's bigger, so you can see. So um, there'll be some common elements, but most of it are, you'll just be able to look up um, uh, to know which elements to use um, and how to use it. It'll be some examples. It's fairly straightforward. Um, <clears throat> to, to do. If you have any questions, we'll do, go through any questions in the afternoon stand up or in the morning stand up, all right? But most of what we'll do will be focused on how do we get JavaScript to interact with this. Um, what else can I say about HTML? HTML was originally designed, um, it hasn't changed that much um, uh, over the past, I don't know, 30 years um, or more. Um, it was originally designed as a way to um, convert essentially research papers um, into a, a digital format. Um, I think one of the original uh, ideas behind HTML was, uh, who's that guy who invented the World Wide Web since uh, Tim Berners-Lee was like, I want to access some of my research in a remote place. How can I make all of my research uh, in a digital format? Um, and what do I need to do to uh, sort of encode that? And he came up with this markup language to show uh, one of the main parts of, uh, of the paper, which is why there's, there's, there's a lot of, um, um, document specific um, uh, uh, elements to it, things like the head of a paper, headings, paragraphs, and um, things like that. So that was some of the original intention uh, behind it. But it's, it's made its way uh, uh, and stayed around because it's, it's useful um, with, with a few uh, changes over the past I don't know, 30 odd years. Um, uh, so, um, we're going to um, we're going to uh, simply use HTML as a way for our browser to uh, uh, to then display its content. Um, uh, so I ask my browser to open this. Where is it over here? Um, uh, I can see the the, the file path um, uh, in your navigation bar for your browser. Uh, you uh, give it essentially an address. And it looks at the first um, part of this to understand what protocol to use to go fetch that, that, that resource. Um, so you, you probably notice uh, it says file rather than HTTP or HTTPS. So it's a different protocol. It just asks your file system uh, to go fetch it um, and go, goes and finds it and then loads it in the browser. Um, and uh, and uh, this is the, the location of it. And so, uh, uh, we can we can then display it in the browser. So by uh, inspecting this page, I have access to um, uh, uh, essentially a representation of everything uh, that my browser can see. I'm just going to remove some of these things. Oh, I don't want to press that one. Okay. 
Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, as I demonstrated earlier, I can uh, play around with JavaScript in the console. Um, and this will be uh, one of the main areas uh, that you uh, get feedback about your programs. And even your console.log statements will appear in this console. Um, so when you were working with JavaScript in the um, uh, in the browser, all your console logs appear in this console, right? In this one here. Um, uh, so um, what can we do? Well, when you run JavaScript in the browser, it can it has access to everything in this window. Um, so uh, let's imagine, for example, I wanted to find out. Uh, what is available uh, 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 currently to JavaScript. So it's specifically because we're operating in the browser that the browser exposes itself to JavaScript that, that you want to use. So what does that mean? Well, document by itself gives me like an object. So document is part of the browser API, right? Every browser will support you be able to use document um, in your JavaScript console. It by itself, if you try and run it like in a normal JavaScript program, like uh, in Node.js, uh, has has no idea what it is. In the same way that the browser doesn't know what the process is. All right, so you just have to remember what environment you're running in. Document does not exist in 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 your Node.js version of JavaScript, but it does exist in the browser because it comes from the browser. The browser says, if you want to operate, if you want to interact with with my HTML, uh, here's the document for you to use. I mean, not just the top level document. But you have access to um, uh, different parts of the page. For example, you can see that uh, I can get in the body, and this gives me back the HTML of uh, the document. Um, I can, uh, given that I've given this an ID, I can say I can target different parts of the page. So I could do something like document uh, 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 get me um, uh, uh, the element with the ID of message because I've given it a message. Oh dear. Uh -oh. If my sound goes off, please let me know. Oh dear. Well, we'll see. Um, so you, I can I can like uh, target different things on my page. Um, uh, I can, um, let's say this is the store as a variable. Um, and I can change different parts of it. I can get like, a, for example, this is like, uh, goodbye. And I can update different parts of my page. So by JavaScript, um, um, uh, I can access the page. I can target different parts of it. I can update, I can change it. And this gives us a lot of flexibility, a lot of, a lot of power over how websites can behave, right? Uh, imagine uh, we had a, a butt on the page, and when I clicked on it, I could change something. Uh, this is all possible in JavaScript. Right? Uh, the, the next thing we have to think about is, OK, I have access just to the document, but I also have access to any event that happens. So there's something that we'll, we'll cover this week, um, um, but this is what I want you to think about uh, in the browser, where we have uh, a bunch of not just the document, but uh, as available to us, but we also have events. What do I mean by events? I mean anything that the browser has registered as an event. So it might be uh, some simple ones, some common ones uh, that you might know of already, um, uh, might be something like a button click, a click event. So uh, your browser registers a click, so when I click, uh, not like that. But anytime I click on the page, the browser listens to that event and does something with it. At the moment, it does nothing because uh, I haven't told my told the browser to do anything with it. Um, uh, when I move my cursor, uh, maybe over a certain element, that's also another event. Um, when I load the page, that's an event. Uh, there, there are tons and tons of events that we can we can listen to and then trigger different things to happen. And the idea of this uh, is essentially thinking about events um, and um, uh, uh, event-driven programming. So in the context of thermostat, we want to think about what events can we use to say, when I click on this button, I want to then trigger this thing to happen. So we'll need to find a way to listen to the click event on a button and then execute a bit of logic as a result. 
and we can target different parts of the page because JavaScript has access to the document and it has access to the browser events, all through what we call the browser API. The browser exposes itself to JavaScript to say, you want to play around, do some things? Absolutely, Here, here's the way that you can do it. So um, let's have a look at um, MDN uh, browser API. Let's start here and have a look. Um, let's have a look at Ooh, doesn't look like sound. Uh, let's have a look at the document, which is what we were uh, uh, working with. So the document interface represents any page loaded in the browser. Uh, so that's what I was essentially uh, uh, working with when I typed into my browser the document. Uh, and it returns to me. Um, what does it say? It returns to me. Um, uh, a representation of the web page. So uh, we can look up a bunch of different um, um, uh, uh, events. We can look up anything using the MDN docs to think about how JavaScript works in the web. It's a, uh, a fairly exhaustive uh, documentation for JavaScript running in the browser. Um, and I expect you'll get more and more comfortable with it throughout this week and next week. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, so uh, we talked a bit some of the difference between Node.js and the browser. Um, uh, this might be a little bit tricky to begin with as we as we as we get more comfortable with the distinction between the two of them and um, uh, uh, where JavaScript runs. Um, but we're going to be focusing the next two weeks on JavaScript in the browser. Uh, other than that. Well, so I probably should. I'll talk about tomorrow morning as well. But let me see this idea in your head. Um, so if uh, we think about um, uh, how do I want to display this. Um, let's display this as an interaction. So say, for example, there's a, I mean, it's a bit bigger so we can see this. Let's model that simple interaction of having a button uh, that says up and a number uh, it starts with 20. And uh, there's an interaction here that says click up. Um, and I want to go to a page that says 21 and with the same button. Okay, so this is trying to do a simple uh, a model of an interaction where we click on this button and we want this as the expected uh, 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 web page that we see. All right, fairly straightforward. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, you'll probably spend an afternoon or maybe a bit of tomorrow thinking about how to implement this. Um, uh, not a problem, all right? Um, uh, but let's think about uh, the way that we want to uh, uh, test this, and this is where I'm coming to this. There are two things that we need to think about. One is um, uh, testing the interaction. Ooh. Guest architecture, you're in the way. Number two, we also need to take test the logic uh, of our uh, JavaScript. So there'll be some JavaScript object uh, that represents, let's say, for example, we'll talk about the thermostat. So we'll have a class that has some state with a temperature that, in, that updates it and goes to from 20 to 21. So we're going to want something to make sure some testing framework that tests that our JavaScript is working as expected. So for this, so far we've been using Jasmine and we'll continue to use Jasmine. 
right? Quite straightforward. We've been doing this before, um, uh, creating classes, creating, creating methods, and getting Jasmine to test it. All right, the thermostat uh, object, uh, the domain model is not that complicated. Um, uh, it'll be one class uh, with some behavior, all right? Um, uh, this part is more interesting. How do we uh, uh, test uh, the user interaction here? So uh, tomorrow morning, I'll introduce a test framework that uh, doesn't care about your JavaScript. All it does is expect to be able to, to essentially replicate the user interaction. So it will go to a page um, and it will expect this page to be available to it. We'll find this button, we'll click on it, and then we'll assert that the page has the right content. So this will be asserting on essentially what the, what the, what, what the user sees, not the underlying JavaScript. All right, so this will be what we call a feature test. We've done something similar to this uh, um, in, in our Node.js programs, thinking about how people would use our programs, but as from like a, almost from a software developer point of view, actually like creating objects and, and invoking functions directly. But now that we're gonna be thinking about web applications from the perspective of people who can interact with them through the browser, we're gonna create a clear distinction between feature tests and they don't care about the underlying logic. They just want to make it sure it's used as expected. I go to the page. I see, I see that there's a 20 there. I see there's a button. I'm going to click that button. And I want to see the page have 21. Right? It doesn't care about the underlying JavaScript. It's just about from the user's point of view. So we're going to introduce a test framework for this called Cypress. And I'll talk more about the setup of this tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Um, and we're going to use Jasmine for the rest of our logic as we've been doing so far. Cool. Okay, I've been talking a little while. <clears throat> um, I think this is all I wanted to, to share. So maybe let's I'll pause for any Q for questions about some of the intro stuff I've been talking about. And that's that's to your mind. Um, and then we can make sure everyone knows what they're going to be doing for this afternoon, which is this step here, business logic. And um, let's go through any questions. How many thoughts, any reflections? Anything on this on, on this mirror board that is um, interesting or question worthy? Give me a thumbs up if that gives you like some kind of overview here, or um, uh, if, if it's not a thumbs up, what more can I, I know, talk about at the moment? Some thumbs up. Cool. Thanks, folks. Okay. Um, ben F, what's your key takeaway at the moment? Um, my key takeaway is that obviously browser JavaScript is different, is going to be different to Node.js and it's going to be essentially using more things. It's using HTML, CSS and so on. It's going to be essentially there's more things interacting with each other and so on. Yep. Cool. Um... If that's the key, date, key takeaway for everyone, it's a good thing. Node.js is different to JavaScript and browser. And so I've hit that home, which is good. Um, awesome. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, well, uh, I think that's, that's it. Um, I would now like to pay you all off. Um, let's go with new pairs. And uh, luckily, Mo and Eugene are paired up together, so we, we have normal pairs. Um, okay. 
Cool. These are our pairs for this afternoon and for tomorrow. Um, and uh, my expectation uh, for everyone is to be able to go through um, uh, the first step here, which is using the specification uh, to test drive your, um, uh, your business logic. Um, it says here, use Cypress to test drive. Don't use Cypress, use Jasmine. Um, this is a typo and I'll correct it for tomorrow. Um, so I want you to go through your normal process to test drive the thermostat class, think about the requirements, extract some stories if you want to, uh, build your domain model with your pair partner uh, and then test drive it. Um, and uh, I'll talk about Cypress tomorrow. Um, if you get through this um, uh, by the end of today, let me know and I'll give you more things to work on, all right? So by tomorrow morning, I want everyone to have a tested thermostat class that has some behavior and we can get to the, the interactions and think about how this works. Sound good? Cool. Any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, enjoy your afternoon. I will also uh, send out that sign-up seat sheet for um, your press observation, so look out for that as well. Any questions, let me know. I'll be on Discord. Otherwise, enjoy your afternoon. See you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.